Yo, what up everybody? Hey, it's Jason and today we got something really cool going on. Um, after many, many months of waiting, actually probably just over a year or so of waiting, we are finally ready to release the easy mod for the TES Plus by Mad Cats. So much like all of my other easy mods for the Panthera, TE2, TE2 Plus, VLX, and some other ones that we've been working on, this will allow you to install Brooks Universal Fighting Board into the uh, TES Plus. And of course, it looks like one of my cameras isn't working. So let me take a look at that real quick. Hang on. The joys of technology. It was just working a second ago. Oh no. And OBS crashed. Oh, no, it didn't. Good. Woo. Look at us go. All right, just give me one second. Something's going on. All right. Let that boot back up. The joys of all of these dang video encoders are killing me. There we go. Nice. All right. So, as I was saying, uh, we are going to uh, be able to put the Universal Fighting Board made by Brook um, into a TES Plus without any soldering and minimal uh, cutting, etc. There's always a little bit of cutting involved because a lot of these companies have decided it's a good idea to solder USB cables to the PCBs, which bugs the crap out of me, but I digress. So in your kit, you are going to get the Universal Fighting Board, and uh, it's got this nice little sticker here that says Easy Mod, so you know it's for this. Additionally, you're going to get a little package like this. And inside the package, it's going to come with a bunch of wires, what looks to be a piece of red raw meat, what is actually the Easy Mod, this little adapter board for the USB cable, and then these six PCB feet that you will need to mount your brook inside the TES Plus, as well as this little, this little adapter. So uh, let's go ahead and look at this a little bit closer. So we'll open up the package for the main TES Plus Easy Mod. Let me open this guy up. Link. And I'm just going to rip the package because why not? And you've got this nice little green PCB that has everything pre-soldered, ready to go. And uh, um, it fits right into the stock location. Uh, so that's really good. And on the bottom here, you have the... TES Plus um, uh, flat ribbon cable connector for the touchpad. So there you go. Uh, inside, if we look a little bit closer at the cable pack, you are going to open this up. You're going to find that you're going to actually get rid of some cables in your TES. Uh, first off, you've got this 20 pin connector here that connects up to the Brook Universal Fight Board. It's got uh, red and blue wires that go up to um, the button board in the TES Plus. I'll show that when we go through the install. We've got this other little wire here. I think that's for, uh, if I remember correctly, that's like start and select. And then you got this black wire here that goes all the way over to your joystick. So that's cable one. Then you've got this cable and this cable. And these are going to interconnect the uh, aux board, or I'm sorry, these are going to connect the um, the rest of the connectors on the Universal Fight Board up to the Easy Mod board right there. So we'll set those off to the side like so. And then last but not least, you've got this US short USB cable. It's got a little angle connector on it, so you can plug that right into the USB connector on your Brook board, and then plug that right into this daughter board, so it adapts very easily your existing uh, TES Plus universe, uh, USB cable. So there you go. So we'll go ahead and set those off to the side because we're not quite ready for any of this stuff yet. Um, and 
then we'll go ahead and open up this brook board and I'll show you why I include this with the kit and I'm not selling just the easy mod stuff by themselves. Uh, you open this up and as you look at it, you're gonna notice there's a lot of special, not special connectors, but different connectors. All right angle connectors everywhere, 20 pin, all throughout the board, as well as this nice Molex connector that I use on everything, so everything should stay locked into place. If you try to buy, if you tried to buy a, an Easy Mod and then you subsequently got one of these boards from another shop, it would come with these headers going vertically, and then you would not be able to install this in your case because there's not enough room. And then you'd have to try and desolder this. And 99% of the time, uh, people who've tried to desolder connectors on these have destroyed boards, and they essentially throw. $90 down the drain. So we've saved you the trouble and we have these as a whole kit uh, to make installation super easy. All right, so let's go ahead and set this off to the side. It's almost a shame that I had to cut that cable, or that, not that cable, I'm sorry, that sticker. The sticker came out really great. All right, so we'll set that off there. All right, now to show you that there is no trickery, I actually went on Amazon. Let me see if I can't zoom out here. Oh, there we go. Uh, I went on Amazon and I picked up a brand new TES Plus you can see that the labels or the, the seals are still intact. So let's go ahead and yoink, we'll cut these off. All right. And for those who are curious, yes, the Easy Mod will be for sale uh, starting today. As soon as I get done with the stream, I'm going to make it live. Now, granted, there are no pictures up on the website yet. It's just a listing. I will be taking pictures after this as well. I kind of got a little excited and decided to do the stream before I finished all of the legwork on the website to uh, get the listing right. But I think you guys are okay with this for now. All right. And let's go ahead and just finish opening this. So, like I said, brand new, never opened, just got it. It is a little dusty in there, but that's okay. And we're going to take this out and then just throw all this stuff back in here because I am going to sell this when I'm done. I have no need to have this fight stick. I only bought it to make this video and uh, install the Easy Mod. So, there you go. So, let's keep our fingers crossed that everything goes well today on this build because inevitably there's always something that seems to go wrong when I stream. I don't know why, it's just my luck. Uh, okay, so this is actually, it's not a hard process to do this, but it is a little bit more complex than the TE2 or the, the TE2 Plus or the Panther, et cetera, where you just pop a button, this whole thing opens and you have lots of room to work. Um, we are gonna need to do this in two parts. There's a bottom part and a top part. So we're gonna take the top panel off first. And to do that, you will need some Allen wrenches. Uh, fortunately, I have my Mad Cat's uh, screwdriver here, and conveniently, it uses the exact same size screws that my uh, that f fits with this. So we're going to just go ahead and remove these, like so. And you guys don't need to see me, so let's go to the big screen here so you can see just what we're working on. All right. <clears throat> So we're gonna go ahead and just remove all of these. And you know, as I'm looking at this, it's funny. Um, this is a brand new stick and there's <laughs> there's a little scuff on, uh, on the plastic here off to the left. That's pretty interesting. Oh, all right. And so we continue to undo these screws like so. I'm just sticking them in my little parts tray over here so I don't lose any. Now, when this whole thing is done, your L3, R3 will work, your home will work, um, and your D-pad, left stick, right stick uh, thing will work. Um, the lock switch does not work, and there was a very specific reason I did that. Um, because you have to be able to hold, uh, start and select, and do things to update the brook board, um, it would have required more coding, a more complex board design, and hence a more expensive board. Um, plus, because uh, you can't really get into the stick super easily without taking this whole top panel off. You actually don't want to have some sort of um, uh, 
second button on the, the easy mod that you would do or have to use to do the brook updates. So that button will not work. Okay, so um, I've got the, the case open. Let me see if I can't angle this. You can see all of these wires are just kind of in the way and holding the top panel on. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna use my little dikes here or flush cutters, whatever you wanna call them. Uh, we call them dikes in the Navy. And uh, we're going to just cut that zip tie. <sighs> Excuse me. And we'll cut this one as well because we're gonna disconnect all of these cables. And we'll just disconnect these cables because we're not gonna reuse these. It's fine, Yoink, like that. Uh, we'll disconnect here, like so. <coughs> this one as well. Basically, we're just disconnecting all the cables to give ourselves lots of room to work here, like so. Okay, so we got a lot more lot more there. We want to be careful. We don't want to go too far because we don't want to break this flat ribbon cable that goes to the touchpad. Uh, okay, now we will use just a small flathead screwdriver here and remove the four screws that hold the stock board in place. So we're going to go ahead and open those up. Now, one of the reasons I decided to do this easy mod is I actually did an easy mod or a mod on uh, this very fight stick at Evo in 2016. I used a TE2 plus um, easy mod to, as the basis and uh, I spent a bunch of time just kind of working through that, making sure I got it done right. Um, and it was, uh, it was a long, long mod. I was not very happy with how long it took. So I figured, you know, it's time to do an easy mod. So I had designed this a long time ago. And then of course, Mad Cats goes out of business. I was concerned that there wasn't a lot of these sticks on the market. So I wasn't sure if it was economically feasible to do a run. And then all of a sudden, a lot of people's TES pluses started dying because the boards were failing. And I knew at that point it was time to actually do this. So, all right, next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna disconnect these cables over here as well, get them out of the way. And there you go. Uh, we'll go ahead and cut this USB ferrite bead off because we want some room. We want to be able to pull this out. And then down here at the bottom, let's see if we can't zoom in here and you guys can see this. Don't mind me. All right. All right. There we go. There we go. We're going to very gently disconnect this clip that holds the flat cable in. You don't want to go too far. I mean, you're, if you break this, it's not a huge deal. You're replacing this board anyway, and you don't need to reuse the clip, but you want to try and keep this in uh, good condition. So there you go. And it just slides out. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use your flush cutters here and just get the clip these wires at the board as close as you possibly can like that. And voila, now they're all off and the stock board is done and we set that off to the side. And now let's go ahead and zoom back out. And as we go through any of this, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, please don't hesitate to throw something in the chat and uh, we'll chat about it and go through it. Um, <clears throat> okay, just to give myself even some more working room, I am going to take this board out and this is like the harness that uh, all the buttons and stuff plugs into. And I'm only doing that for ease of work. If you don't mind working in small constrained spaces, uh, then you can leave it in, but I like to have as much room to work as possible. So I'm going to take this out like so, voila, and set that off to the side. Now, there are two uh, buttons down here. You've got your start. I think it's uh, the right button is start. Yep, the gray one is start and the, the white one is select. Um, We'll go ahead and, again, to make this easier, clip that zip tie. We can add more zip ties later, uh, but we'll take that. And I always like to just take a picture really quick uh, if I'm going to disconnect the wire and I'm not 100% sure where it's going to go back later. So I'm just going to take a quick picture with my iPhone here, like that. So now I know where the gray and the white wires go. And gently, I'm just going to disconnect them. And I'm only disconnecting them because I want to set the entire top panel off to the side. And these wires are actually part of the, on, well, not part of, but they're connected to buttons that are on the case. And so there you go. So now I can move those 
And now this whole top panel can be set off to the side and I've got plenty of room to work inside the case for the rest of the mod. Okay, now you may be wondering, okay, so big freaking deal. We got the whole case apart. Now we've just got this shell. What do we do now? Okay, well, the way this whole mod works is you wanna keep this area and this area is clear of as many cables as you possibly can. Now, to do that, it's gonna require us to install this little adapter board kind of un up under over here and require us to reroute this USB cable a little bit. And then the brook board is actually gonna get mounted underneath the plastic here on the bottom panel. And uh, we're gonna to wanna to mount it as far back in here on the bottom as possible. So we're gonna actually take the bottom panel off. Now, <clears throat> what we're gonna do uh, is <clears throat> prep this USB cable and all you gotta do is kind of straighten the wires out here. And with your handy dandy wire strippers, these are probably overkill for what most of y'all use, and that's okay. We are just going to strip off and expose some wire. Uh, that was just a shield, so that's okay. You don't need to strip off that much, just enough to put them into the screw terminals. And actually, these are probably a little overkill. Let me see if I've got my smaller ones. All right, these will, these should work. Um, The joys of moving, when you're moving, you've got to get everything kind of organized, and that means all my tools are kind of packed up, uh, getting ready to be moved, so I can't find my smaller wire cutters, and that's okay. Uh, we're just going to use these. Um, these are some pretty thin wires, so I'm going to go all the way down to 2022, 20, and that's not enough. So I guess I'm going to have to use these and hope that I, I can get a good strip on them. All right, that's pretty good. Now, I guess I could just go like this, take that whole little thing of uh, shrink wrap off, and that'll give me a lot more room. So I like that. Let's just do that. All right. Now, some of these, these are actually meant to be able to strip more than one wire at a time. Unfortunately, with these little thin wires, it doesn't always work super great. So that's why I'm not trying to do all of them at once. Good. And one more. Cool. All right, so now we've got uh, our power, which is red, our ground, which is black, our D minus, which uh, I think is white, green is D plus, and our shield ground all stripped out and ready to go. So now what we can do is we can uh, actually Go ahead and connect the wires up. You'll see here, uh, it's probably difficult to see on camera because it's so small, but uh, they are labeled B, B, G, W, and R. So that goes with the colors of the wires. That's pretty easy. So let me grab my super small jeweler's kit here. Oh, hang on one second, everybody. I've got a phone call that I gotta take.
Oh my lord, I apologize, everybody. Uh, so that was my my accountant who does my taxes, my personal taxes, um, as well as the business taxes. And he had some questions, of course, about my wife's business that I couldn't answer. And uh, then just a couple of other minor questions. So I apologize for putting everyone on mute. And obviously, this uh, will not count as the amount of time it takes to install one of these because more often than not, you guys aren't going to get a phone call from your tax guy. <laughs> I hope. Uh, okay, so back at it. So I actually bought these Husky screwdrivers. You saw me opening the pack. They're a nice little kit. They're very small, um, and they're awesome. Oops, I've got another one over here. They come like this, and I think it's like 10 or 12 bucks at Home Depot. I'm not shilling for Husky or Home Depot, but uh, these have been an invaluable addition to my toolbox. Um, if you notice, I've always had little Husky screwdrivers. These actually you can get too. They actually have a little... Uh, uh, Thing in the end so you can twist it while you're holding it they're they're great um the little ones are a little fragile and i managed to break one so i had to buy more uh so anyways so now we've got uh, what i did while i was on the phone and you guys probably saw this as i loosened the screws uh here and um let me see if we can't zoom in and you guys can see this a little bit closer oops wrong way all right so you can see here that there are holes that the wires will go into. And uh, if uh, you don't have those backed out all the way, what will happen is you'll put the wires in, you'll tighten them down, the wires will fall out. So it's very important that you back them down. You'll actually see as you spin it, the little metal bar that's kind of at the bottom here will move that way and open up a little hole for you to insert said wires and tighten them down. So that's uh, what I did there. So let's go ahead and zoom out here and get back into focus down here and what I'm gonna do is like I said earlier these are marked so I'm going to just go ahead and start ooh, excuse me uh, putting the wires in to their respective terminals and screwing them down so we'll start with the shield here plug that in and then tighten it down uh, shield and ground are both black you can interchange them. The ground plane on this little board is all interconnected, so that's good. Makes it easy. And we'll do the same here. Okay. I want to make sure that all of the wires go in the screw terminal. You don't have any errant wires, because if you do, what that means is you could actually ground it to the case or something like that, or ground, a, ground it to like a data line, and you don't want to do any of that. These wires are pretty thin, so just be careful. You don't want to break them. So we just continue down the line. We're on the data plus or the green wire now. And we're going to screw that in as well. Okay. And moving down to the D minus, the white wire, like so. Last but not least, the red wire or your VCC, your plus 5 volts, your power, whatever you want to call it. The magic juice that turns everything on. And we call that done. Like so. Alright, cool. So that's what it looks like. Very easy, very clean, very simple. Alright, you could do gentle the a gentle tug test. You just grab the wires and pull them on a little bit. Make sure that they don't come out. <clears throat> okay. Yep. Good. Everything is in good. So there we go. Now uh, what we'll do too is I'm actually going to just kind of do a preliminary uh, connection test to make sure that we're not going to have any issues. I'm plugging in my whoops USB cable like that. Be careful. <clears throat> and... I'm going to take out my TES plus wire. That's how you know this hasn't been messed with. This thing's a pain. Come on. I really like to know how they got this in here. Goodness. Don't mind my big fat blue head. Sorry guys. All right, there we go. 
So I got that wire out and we're just gonna plug. This is just a good opportunity to make sure that everything's connected right so far and make sure you've got continuity. Uh, Cause what you don't wanna do is get this all in place and then find out you have to take the whole thing open because you're not getting it to pop up on your computer. So I'm just gonna reach over and plug this into a USB port. Hopefully my computer doesn't have any fits. The blue light on the brook board pops on. That's good. And Windows says they're setting up a controller. So that is good. We know we have a good connection between our little adapter board and the brook board. So boom, boom, there you go. Now you guys can see it. Thumbs up like that. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and just disconnect the, the cable from the computer and disconnect the brook board here and set that off to the side. <clears throat> now at this point, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to go ahead and rotate that like so. I think, I think, uh, no, I guess it doesn't really matter. We'll get that back on there. We'll grab a zip tie. This is, there you go. So there's the bezel. That's the whole bottom side. It's a whole thing. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna grab a zip tie here and I'm just going to go ahead and zip tie this whole wackadoo contraption uh, of the ferrite bead back to the body of the case, like so, like that. And one more for good measure, just because, why not? Turn this off into place. All right, and we'll clip off the tails with the dikes. Like that. Voila, that's done. Now, uh, you might be like, oh, what are we going to do with that? We don't want to just leave it hanging. I agree. Yes. Uh, agree, we are not going to do that. Uh, oh, I see a question in the chat. Uh, are you going to be at Evo this year? No, I will not be at Evo. I am moving to Japan in about three weeks. So I will be at Evo Japan 2019. Uh, if they do it in January again, and assuming my work schedule allows for it. Okay, so next thing, what we're gonna do while we're kind of sitting up here waiting before we take the bottom panel off, we're gonna go ahead and just insert these little um, PCB feet for this. I'm gonna just do two, one in each corner because this board is very small. And just kind of be careful and plug them in like that because ultimately what we're gonna do is we're gonna just kind of set this up underneath here like this. Uh, when we install the bottom panel again, and we'll be fine. But there we go. <clears throat> All right. Now, what we're going to do is flip the whole case over, like so. Very nice. And this is why taking the panel off is uh, convenient while you're building it, because it gives you a lot more mobility. All right. So then we'll just take our little screwdriver here, and we are going to remove said these bottom panel screws, like this. Oh, I'm glad you like your Panzer, and thank you for buying one. I also like the Panzers. As a matter of fact, I actually have a couple of Panzers um, that I will be building on stream later this week. Um, I got some custom printed Plexis. One will be my personal Panzer. Uh, one will be just a fun Panzer. And I guess that's it. I just have those two. So we got those four screws out, and I think we have to take, yeah, we gotta take this one out too. I always forget. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> and you can see that the panel immediately starts to bow up when you take that last screw out. Isn't that something? Look at that, come on. That's some Bush League crap right there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this whole thing back over, like so, right? And as we flip it back over, uh, the reason we're doing that is so we can kind of orient ourselves on the panel. Because if you remember, I said the brook board needs to be mounted kind of back here out of the way so the wires can come out and easily come up here to get connected to the easy build. So what we're gonna do is we kind of look at it and eyeball it and we're like, yeah, pr probably somewhere back here, something, something like that will work. 
<clears throat> and we're going to take these PCB feet and just go ahead and insert them into the uh, oops, to the uh, UFB like so. And then we put it here. And as you kind of move it around, you can see that you've got plenty of room, so it's not going to uh, to touch the metal and short anything out. Um, the idea, like I said earlier, is you want to try and get this as far back as possible. So I'm going to try and get that mounted somewhere like this. And I'll just go ahead and take these stickers off the bottom of the feet like so. Okay. Get them all aligned so my OCD doesn't kick in. All right. And I, let's see. All right, yeah. So we're just going to come up like this. I'm probably no more than a thumb's length away from the bottom here. Just go ahead and tack that down like so. And voila. Guess what's not going to move? Nice. All right, cool. So that's part is donezo. All right. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to grab some of these wires that we showed off earlier. And let's start connecting them up. Now, let's see here. Oh, yeah. One of these is power and ground, I think. I forget. <clears throat> All right, so like this, we're going to just slide in and connect that. It's a nice tight fit, so you don't have to worry about that coming off. Then uh, we're going to use this wire here, and this one only fits in one spot. So we're going to plug that in here like so, and then... These, oh my lord, I forget. I forget. I'm gonna have to look at my my last my last build <coughs> pictures of this. This is why I take pictures of everything, even though I designed it. I can't remember where all the wires <laughs> go. I've got too many fight sticks in my head, but that's why we're doing this. All right, let me just scroll back. Don't mind me. I'm sorry. I've got a. It's been a while since I worked on the TES Plus, so I've got to scroll back through a few. Really need to start thinking about uploading all my pictures to my computer, so I don't have to do this every time. Well, that doesn't help me at all, now, does it? Hmm. Okay, let me uh let me take a look. Check my check on my computer and apologize again, you guys. All right. Um, this is where videos come in handy, don't they? You guys can watch me struggle through this, and then it's fine. Uh, of course, that's not the right one. Oh, here we go. Okay, so... Here, the green wires are for 
turbo LED, turbo key, and ground. Now that I think about it, you don't even really need these. So that goes here. Green wires here, go on. Like so. The yellow wires are for all of your LEDs, which makes sense. So that goes here, like so. Okay. Then the gray wire is your touchpad click stuff. So that is going to get installed here, like so. And finally, this white wire, which is never really going to be needed because I don't anticipate Brooke to ever actually integrate all of the uh, touchpad functions into the Universal Fighting Board, at least not yet, or whatever. That goes there, and so voila. Now you've got this hydra of wires coming off of your Universal Fight Board that are going to come up into the case later. Okay, now, uh, so that part is all done. So what we can do now is go ahead and actually we're going to bring this over like this. We're going to put this down like that. We're going to put this here like so and make sure that we have access to all the wires. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to fish them through this hole down here like so. And we will mash this metal panel back into place promptly like this and hopefully it will be flush when we're done because this bow is really bad all right and you can hear it popping into place Ugh. Ugh. all right it's all good it's all good I have other little parts in my parts bucket over there that uh, I was using for that Fanta-based Panzer build earlier today. And uh, the 440 screws look awful a lot like the screws that go into this. Uh, the thread pitch is different, obviously, but it's just you grab one of those and you try and stick it in, it's not going to work. All right. There we go. So we continue. Continue on. We forge forward. Cool, cool, cool. And last but not least. There we go. All right, good. So that is done. So we flip this back over, and voila, now our fight stick's got a huge mess. And of course, what did I forget to do? I forgot to hook the damn USB cable back in. Son of a gun. So guess what now we have to do again? Crap. See, I got so excited. And what did I do? I made a mistake. Learn from me. Don't follow in my footsteps. But we are going to use the drill to make this easier and faster. There we go. I'm not playing games anymore. This happened to me the first time I built this too. Or built one of these, not this one, obviously. Because I totally forgot to hook the USB cable up to the board. So we'll just feed this down like this. And for now, we're just going to click it into place. All right, good. Yay! Now we're ready. Yay! Now we're not completely jacked up. All right, now we put this whole thing back in and just do like we just did a few minutes ago. Feels like deja vu, right? Right. Okay, let's not break that. All right. This right here, the amount of time and effort it takes to put one of these in is the reason why I have, I made the Panzer. <laughs> it's just so much easier to buy something that's kind of ready off the shelf to do all the stuff, all the consoles immediately. 
And by the time this is all said and good, you know, you're spending almost as much on a Panzer as you are when you get one of these and easy mod it. So. All right, one more screw and we'll be good. And I'm gonna just point out as I'm doing this, the bottom here, these scratches and these blemishes, that's from the factory. You saw, I opened the stick brand new and uh, you saw, and you know, I've got it on a nice padded surface here. So like some of these little scuffs and whatnot, that's not from me. All right, now we flip this back over and hey, now we're ready. Now. Jason. Sorry guys. That was not supposed to happen. <clears throat> All right, so now that we got that in, we're gonna take this and we're gonna feed this under. And like I said, you wanna keep this area clear. So you're gonna put this and you're gonna tuck it as far back and under this plastic as far as back as possible. Um, so it doesn't interfere with your lever. So I'm gonna use my screwdriver and kinda feed that back like that. And then, there we go. That should be pretty good. Like that, good. Good, 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 good. Awesome. So now we're starting to look pretty clean. Okay. Now let's take our easy build board like this and get this lined up like so. Line the little nubs up. And there we go. In place. Voila. We'll grab our little screws. We'll do this one by hand. Drop the screw promptly. Screw this guy in to the holes. There we go. You don't need to crank these down, you just need to hold them in place. Son of a bitch. All right. Okay. And two more. Finally, the last one. All right, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Now that's all good to go. Uh, now comes the fun part, is trying to get all these wires wrangled so that you can get them all installed easily. So we do know that uh, the blue and these red wires here, they're gonna come up to the button board so we can kind of just move these up out of the way like so and just kind of tuck them in the back out of out of sight out of mind for right now uh, we are going to need to do some major cable management there uh, and then we're going to plug these in uh, to the easy build here so the white wire it's only can go in only one location voila like so then We are going, okay, the uh, green and yellow wire comes back here, excuse me, it gets plugged in like that. This gray, white, and black wire gets plugged in up at the front here like so. Okay, nice and tight. <clears throat> and then what you can do is you're just gonna wanna feed these wires down, 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 down. And you're gonna wanna tuck them underneath the plastic bezel the best you can, because again, you need to keep as much room uh, available for your buttons as possible. So I'm just gonna kinda stick them back in there. I didn't wanna make these too short because then it would've been harder to install, but uh, at the same time, if you make them too long, then you gotta fight with them, kinda like I'm doing now. All right, so there's that, there's this. 
I'm sure the people out there that are going to take their time to do this and really spend some time cable managing will have some tips and tricks for the rest of us. And if you do, definitely share them in uh, what will be the comments of this video uh, on Twitter because I will export this to Twitter so future uh, easy mod users can uh, uh, use this as a guide to help them put it in. Uh, don't mind me. All right, cool. There we go. All right, so that's good. This one's going to your joystick, so we'll just feed this up a little like this. Okay. There we go. There. That doesn't look so bad. All right, now we'll grab a zip tie. We're going to zip tie these together like so. So we have just one big trunk of wires kind of coming down like that. Now the rest of these connectors are going to connect up with the aux panel. And I totally made a mistake. But it's a recoverable mistake because the uh, the it's for the touchpad and the touchpad connectors on the bottom. So even though we've kind of got all this in the way, we can just disconnect these screws when we're ready to bring the whole panel back over, connect the touchpad and put it back down into place. It's not the end of the world. It is okay. Um, entrepreneuring folks may want to uh, flip the panel over, take the bottom off again, and use some uh, you know some better cable management under here to uh, move these wires and you know kind of tuck them back further. Uh, totally up to you. I think this will be okay. Uh, I think when I did it, I actually got it all working, then flipped it over, took the bottom off real carefully, and then uh, did a bunch of zip ties to hold it all in place out of the way. Um, again, totally up to you. It will work either way. Uh, okay, so now we're ready to kind of put this whole thing back together. And this is where it gets a little uh, hectic because now we're working against the constraints of the panel and only being able to keep it so far away from the, the rest of the case. Uh, so like I said earlier, uh, we're, we can disconnect this guy because guess what? We don't need that joystick lever connector anymore. We're going to use our new one. Um, so like I said earlier, we do need to uh, connect the touchpad wire up to uh, the bottom of the board. So let's go ahead and take these four screws out, flip the board over, and connect the ribbon cable back up. And hopefully my, my spare, my cables and such as I'm doing this doesn't hit a, a random button on my stream deck again and go to the outro or maybe the intro or something else. That was weird. So we did that. Now we're going to take this board up very gently, very gently, disconnect the clip for the flat cable. There we go. And then we'll take this. Feed it in like so. <clears throat> like that. And then you just clip it back into place. And that's not straight at all. You want to make sure it's in there straight because if it's not, you'll not make connection with all the pins on the little ribbon. And you definitely, it's the contacts will go up. So they're not facing you. Okay, a little snug, snug, snug. And this is where you kind of have to be a little bit of a balancing act guy. So we set that back up. Move this back into place. Plug that back down. And then we can screw the board back in. <clears throat> All right. 
get to watch me struggle with these stupid screws all over again. All right, there's one. Drop the screw, of course. Okay, and finally the last one. There we go. Good. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our button board here. We're gonna go ahead and screw that back into place because now we're we're at the, the final steps, if you will, of this whole assembly. <clears throat> All right. And then if you recall earlier, I said we were going to need to make sure that these wires were kind of out of out of out of the way. Uh, there's a reason for that. Okay, good. Oh, there we go. Cool. Um, this red wire and this blue wire has to come up, and you have to make sure that it clears all the uh, bottom connectors on these buttons. Now these are different lengths. So you can't accidentally put them in the wrong spot. Let me just double check something here. Yep. The uh, red one, the longer of the two goes all the way over and the blue one, the shorter of the two connects to your very first connector here. So let's go ahead and just clip those in. You'll feel them clip into place. Now I'll tell you, Mad Cat's connectors are garbage. I'm sorry, I hate to say it, but they are garbage. Um, I've actually had to replace some connectors because I wasn't getting a very good connection with these uh, wires. Um, I don't know if they're just the, the, the cheap generic JST connectors they used are just that bad or, or what, but um, hopefully you don't have to do that and hopefully we won't have to do that with this one. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. All right, so I'm just using a zip tie here to uh, get this zip tied together and uh, we'll hold that back in the back like so clip off the tail and then uh, we'll consult our photos I'm fairly certain I remember how to do that what they were but uh, to reconnect the select and options button uh, yep gray and then white so we're gonna go ahead and reconnect these by just uh, putting the gray one here like so oh look they are labeled down there I didn't even notice that Convenient as that. Good job. Molded right into the plastic. All right. And again, here and here. Clip tug test to make sure they're in. Good to go. And uh, because there was a zip tie holding them into this main, main bundle of wires, we'll do that again. Let's grab one from our bag. And uh, there you go. And we'll disconnect or clip that off. Cool. So that's that. Now we should have a bunch of good connections there. We can reach up and with this and just connect up our our uh, lever like so. There you go. And now we've got these last little bit of wires that we need to connect. And this is where you kind of have a even more of a balancing act to deal with. The uh, gray wire is, I think it's, let me just double check. You think it's one thing and then you go to put it in, you're like, oh, it's in the wrong spot. Okay, good. So the gray wire comes up here to the top, like so. The black wire is going to 
clip into this one here, like so. And then this last black wire is going to clip in to this doodad, and it only fits one way and in one spot, like so. All right, make sure they're all plugged in. And there you go. Now I would say this is done, but now we have to just test it. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna loosely fit that on there. No cable management, it's gonna look like crap, but that's okay. We're gonna plug this in to the computer. All right, we get our DP mode, all our little guys there. Let's go ahead and open up joy.cpl. And it shows up as controller for Windows, so that's good. That works. Okay. Don't mind me. I'll show you guys all this here in a minute, I promise. Okay, okay cool. Coolness. All right, so uh, let me show you what I just did. Uh, I opened up joy.cpl and then I did um, uh, uh, the properties. And you're definitely gonna wanna do this because you wanna test everything before you button everything up. So let me see. So what we did is uh, you guys can see everything. There's no trickery, no big deals. Uh, first thing I do is I test the lever, no problems. And then I test the buttons, no L3, or I'm sorry, uh, square, triangle, R1, um, L1, then X, circle, uh, R2, L2. Then we test the L3 button, the R3 button, start, select, um, touchpad click. Oh, touchpad click doesn't actually do anything. Uh, wait, does it? Yeah, it's supposed to. Uh, maybe I don't have that ribbon cable connected properly. We'll have to check that. Uh, and then uh, the PlayStation button opens up the game thing. Okay, so there you go. Um, then if we click this button, we go, whoops. Go to left stick mode, cool. Go to right stick mode, that works. Hit it again there. Um, I've repurposed this lock switch to be uh, turbo. And then you can see the, the blinky light there. Okay, so there you go. So it all works fine, except for the touchpad click. We need to figure that out. So let's go ahead and disconnect. <clears throat> and I suspect that I've just got a, a loose cable on the touchpad. And by a loose cable, I mean I didn't connect it properly. Um, it happens. It's okay. Whoops. See, this is where this is where it becomes fun. All right. And this is also why you do it before you button everything up. So we're just gonna disconnect these cables or these wires, or sorry. We are just going to remove the PCB by taking the screws out again. Third time, right? Awesome. Yeah, right. All right, cool. And we pop it off. Bet you, I know what I did. I think I had the contacts in backwards. All right, so let me just real quick test this again. There we go, ha <laughs> ha, it works. All right, so what had happened is I just had the, the flat ribbon cable flipped upside down. The contacts actually need to go down when you put it in. So you see the blue tab and I had it reversed. So no harm, no foul, we fixed it, it was an easy thing. So let's go ahead and uh, continue on with our, uh, with our completion of said easy mod. Cause I know that you guys are super excited and eager to buy one of these and I'm super excited to get them shipped out. So let's go ahead and 
get this back into place. There we go. Oops. There we go. And we start the balancing act all over again. I think I have wild animals in my backyard. Maybe it's a Sasquatch. Something back there running around. My dogs are in the house. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> it's running on my roof. That's what it is. It's so weird. I just feel little, I hear little footprints. I wonder if there's like a cat or something that got out and was running around up there. That would be super weird. Alright. Hopefully for the last time, voila, we have those in, and now we can start the... It's not painstaking, but it is kind of tedious. we got to put this whole panel back on. Um, and it's tedious because you've got to kind of fight the wiring a little bit to get it back into place. Now, what you may want to do is uh, just kind of bend the, the um, X button's little uh, tabs off to the side here. And then the other thing you could probably do is, as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that right now. Um, I'm going to zip tie the wiring bundle from the aux panel kind of back together a little bit so that we protect this flat ribbon cable like so because we don't want to damage it I don't want to damage anything really but the flat ribbon cables are usually a little bit more delicate go and just clip these tails off like so all right that should be better all right now like I said this is kind of the, the hard part because you've got this panel that wants to jump out of the bezel bezel and you're like come on and then you got all these wires you got to contend with so I'm just gonna kind of line this thing up <clears throat> push the wires down out of the way like so, you just kind of, for lack of better terms, you just kind of mash it in place like that and, you know, make sure that as you do it, you're not pinching any wires. That's why you kind of look down at it like I did. It's not because you think it's lesser of a controller. No, it's not because of that. It's just because that's what you got to do so you can see. All right. And we go ahead Go ahead and put this all back in. And tighten them down. And you can call this easy modded, but it's not so easy. And uh, it is easy, it's just, it's time consuming. You know, you can have things fast, you can have things easy, or you can have them cheap, but you can't have them all at the same time. That's kind of where we're at with this. So, get these all back in. Right. <clears throat> There's the last one. Unlike the last time I did this, I didn't lose these screws. Yay for me. All right. There we go. Clean this up a little bit. Like so. We 
plug this back in. All right, all four lights light back up as expected because that means it's plugged into window or a Windows machine. Let me see my joystick properties. Hey, it says Pokin controller. That's not right. The button is stuck. This button is stuck and it always gets stuck because that's where a good majority of the wires are. So now we have to open it back up. All right. Yeah, see, everything else, good to go. Well, that button doesn't actually do anything because Pokemon doesn't have that button. But. Oh. <laughs> Lame. All right. This is probably the, 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 the most tedious part is making sure that you get uh, this one button is the problem. It's such a pain in the ass. All right. So we open it back up again. And it's good that we're all kind of seeing these at the same time together because that means that you guys are going to, when you guys have questions, and you're like, hey, this button gets stuck. What do you do to fix it? We're going to fix it together right now. All right, so I'm going to lift this back up. All right, so what's happening is the wires for the, uh, the easy build are just kind of pressing up against the micro switch, and it's holding, holding it down. And uh, so you just kind of, it's, it's, that's what's causing it. So what we can do is we can actually rotate the button. Uh, that won't work like that. And we can bend those tabs just a little bit more. Well, hopefully that's enough. Nope, still not enough. It's just trying to push the button out of its spot. All right, so what I did is I pushed the little wires down, uh, the green, white, and yellow wires that will go to the easy build. And then I, I pushed the panel up here and I slid it back so the force from the wires weren't pushing up on this button. Um, and that, that took care of it. So voila, there you go. <clears throat> and then we just put these back in. And then we call it done, hopefully. Then we call it done. Let's see. All right. Like I'm super paranoid now. I'm like, oh, we need to verify that this is all good still. All right. So how many of you guys follow me on Twitter and Facebook and then saw all those sick builds that we uh, we did yesterday? That was all uh, Arcade Shocks, Terry Nguyen and I knocking all those out. It was a good day. It was a good training sesh, good build day, good shipping day. So I hope uh, I hope everyone enjoyed that because it was sure fun building those things. Oh man, that button is still not. All right, we're gonna have to open it up from the bottom just to kind of get the wires out of the way. It's all good. It is all good. It's just it's it's too much pressure. <clears throat> all right, so we do know, however that this all works. So let me just plug it in one more time and I'll show you guys that button. We can fix the, the mechanical part of it easily. Um, go to properties. Let's go ahead and hit the right screen for you here. There we go. And you can see here that uh, it all works. You know. Buttons being a pain, but that's all right. Yay. Okay. All right, cool. So that's all good. Now uh, let's go ahead and we'll open the bottom and we'll cable manage this and, and get that button so it's not being a pain in the butt. That's the problem with these little teeny tiny cases. They're just a, 
they require a little bit more what I'll call patience and love. Uh, let me cancel out of here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that screen for you so you don't have to keep seeing that. Um, go ahead and just take these off of the drill. And then, so we know that all the boards and stuff are kind of mounted down here, so I'm just gonna be careful not to uh, yank them out of wet the way. And you can see how the uh, green and white wires are definitely pinched up against that button. So this is kind of where it becomes a bit of a nightmare because you don't want to unplug anything, obviously. Disconnect right. that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to disconnect this wire here from the brook, this wire here from the brook. Let's see what else. Disconnect these wires. Basically, I'm disconnecting the wires that were uh, are getting in the way. I'm going to reroute them a little bit in the case so that they go a different route into uh, the bottom of the case here. Uh, so I'm gonna route them around this plastic, this plastic bar that separates the two compartments. And uh, hopefully that will move the mechanical stress that we're dealing with over to a better spot so it's away from the uh, <clears throat> away from the uh, the button just less stuff for it to interfere with I guess there we go yeah already that's looking a lot better I should have thought of this ahead of time didn't though it's alright it's alright it's a learning process right Every time I do an easy mod build or uh, anything, it's you know, always find new and unique ways to do it so it's either faster, cleaner, more efficient, what, or what have you. And that's what we're dealing with right now, making it cleaner. Well, making it so it's fitting better at least. Now that it's clear of the micro switch, it fits great. It feels great. You still have to uh, to uh, bend the little tabs so they're out of the way, but that's all good. That's easy. <clears throat> okay, so now we just tediously plug all these wires back in, like so. It's not nearly as easy upside down and contorted.
here. Like so. Oops. Come on. There we go. And then last but not least, the green. Okay, cool. All right, now we can just kind of move all these wires back like so and put the bottom panel back on, hopefully uh, not causing any issues <laughs> as we do that. That's good. So we learned this lesson late, but uh, the work that we did after we, we learned it could all <laughs> have been avoided by just routing the cables through the joystick area first and not having to do it after the fact. So uh, I hope that by the time you install yours, you've watched this video all the way through and uh, you kind of learned my lesson or, or saw my lesson and uh, uh, were able to plan for it appropriately at the beginning vice having to go back and fix it at the end. So. I will make sure that, oh, look at that. Stupid Mad Cats and their cheap-ass screws. It fucking broke. What a piece of crap. And, of course, the head broke, and it's in plastic, so I can't easy out that. So be careful with yours, please. Don't do that. That really sucks. I'm going to have to take some money off of this when I sell it now. Super lame. Okay, but... Enough complaining about that screw. Let's look at this. Ooh, feels good. I like it. Mm. Now, this PS3, PS4 button will not do anything anymore. There is no need. The Brook Universal Fight Board is 100% auto-detect, except for the Pokin slash Wii U controller. Uh, you do have to uh, hold down that kick one button to force it into that mode, but the rest are auto-detect, and that's really cool. Um, this black is super nice when it's clean but man does it pick up dust like a son of a gun uh there you go <clears throat> all right and uh, let's go ahead and plug the controller in one last time for one more round of tests so that we can all see them on the screen and we'll be good to go here Okay, so it shows up as controller, Xbox One for Windows. And we'll go over to the properties. Oops. Why isn't it switching over? There we go. Over to the properties. And now we just go ahead and test everything out again. So the joystick is all good to go. The buttons, one at a time, all good to go. L3, R3, touchpad click. The home button, which doesn't actually register as anything for you guys to see. We got options. We got select. <clears throat> we can go into left stick mode. We can go into right stick mode. And back to DP. If we hold the lock unlock, we've got turbo action. And no turbo action. And then the LEDs work. So everything works except for this PS3, PS4 button. Voila. So there you go. That was the TES Plus Easy Mod. It is available on my website in uh, about 30 seconds. Let me go ahead and make it available for people to purchase. Please keep in mind there are no pictures. Let me, uh, whoops. Uh, let me go ahead and shift that over. Uh, <clears throat> until I get some pictures up, you won't see any of those. I apologize. Um, TES. Let's go ahead and activate that. You can buy the Easy Mod on my website right now at the price of one forty nine ninety five. That includes the Brook Universal Fighting Board. It includes all of the pieces and parts that are required to install it. All you need to provide are some hands, some basic hand tools, and maybe a couple zip ties. Everything else comes with the kit, so you can go ahead and install it right away. And uh, 
now make your TES Plus either work again or work on new consoles or just upgrade it so it works better. Um, and uh, yeah, so there you go. You can visit my site, www.jasonscustoms.com, and that's Jason with an E, so you can pick yours up today. It will only be available on my website. We've got plenty of them in stock uh, for the first run. After maybe Wednesday of this week, I'll take them down because I have to move them to my warehouse in Florida for Rages X and Reversal to have them on hand. Um, again, it comes with everything you need, ready to go. No soldering is required. I do recommend some flush cutters, uh, some wire strippers, a small screwdriver, as well as a, uh, that's not it, a uh, Allen wrench to get the top screws off. Make sure you do watch this video all the way through, but if you're at this point, point in it already you already have before you install it and there you go so i appreciate you guys tuning in if you guys have any questions always feel free to reach out to me either facebook or twitter uh, and i will post those up in the chat there for you and uh, you can also get me at jasonscustoms.zendesk.com that's my official help desk channel and i can get all of your questions answered through there so i appreciate it if you guys want to make sure you subscribe make sure you follow me on twitch and facebook and twitter and all that good stuff this will be one of the last couple of streams that i do because in the next couple of days probably by the end of next week all of the equipment has to get taken down and packed up and ready for the move to japan so hopefully i will have a nice small space that i can set it all back up over there and continue to do the twitch streams so until next time, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. For those of you guys who have suffered through the hour and a half of me doing this, I appreciate it. You guys are troopers, and I appreciate your, your loyalty and your support and just listening to me ramble on this entire time. And as always, I will catch you guys later. Peace. jasonscustoms.com for the community for the win